So if this is the first time you're watching my videos, they typically start in rush hour, and I got to thinking I have not seen a deep dive into your Tesla touchscreen and all of your technology from your eight cameras on your car to your navigation, music, and AC lie behind that screen, including your autopilot. So sit tight, grab a coffee, get comfortable. We're gonna go and give you a really, really, really deep dive into your Tesla touchscreen. And just so you know, I will have timestamps in the description. So if you want to skip ahead or uh, skip to one of these sections here, don't worry. I'm not going to spend too much time. So do stick with me. Um, at the end, I think we're going to uh, really give you my takeaways of what you most use. But let's continue with the video. So here is your lovely screen of your brand new Tesla. So we're gonna go over all of these buttons, what they mean, but specifically the ones you're gonna use the most. So stick with me. I hope you're okay with this display, this view right here. This is what you're gonna see when you're driving. So just imagine that you're looking at this screen while you're driving. So let's just go ahead and get started. Your Tesla is in park right here. This is the home button screen, if you will. So here's your main controls from quick controls all the way down to software updates. So this is a little bit confusing at first glance, but before we get into this, I want to show you how to drive the car. So you're not going to see it, but I'm going to put my foot on the brake pedal and then I'm going to push down on the joystick. Let's just move this over like that. And that is how you get in drive. So again, you push the joystick down now to go in reverse, you, you click up. And there's your cameras. You can minimize the camera screen by clicking that arrow right there and it'll show you only the reversed um, screen. So to put in park, you push this button right here and now we're back in park. So let's go ahead and go back to that main screen. You wanna pay attention to this. This is really important and what they're gonna walk you through when you get your Tesla. So you go right here into um, easy entry. So you'll see some profiles here, my wife and our car seat. Um, there's a few different profiles. So you wanna click on driver profile. You can add a profile, create a profile. And what that, what that is gonna do, excuse me, is bring up your settings. So um, I'm gonna just create one real quick here. Um, we'll just call it uh, Tesla. And you wanna pay attention to this because you can do multiple different settings. So you can see here, I can change my mirror settings, I can change my steering wheel. So you go into the mirror settings, you use your toggle, um, your uh, scroll wheels to change the um, angles of all of these. So let's go ahead and just play around with that. Okay, that looks great. And then you do the same thing here. You use your toggle wheels to change uh, the depth and the angle of your steering wheel. But let's get to the fun stuff. So that's how you create a profile. I'm just gonna bring it back to my profile like this. Let's get into the fun stuff. So you wanna, let's first um, go to, um, let's go to driving because I think that's where most people are really excited. So you're getting your brand new Tesla and whether or not you have the performance model or the long range, you're gonna see a few different items here. Now chill mode is going to give you the best range and you can see here, whenever I change the setting, it does save in my profile. Standard mode is um, get you that zero to 60 of 5.2 seconds, I believe in the Model 3 uh, standard range plus, which is what this is. Uh, comfort mode, standard and sport. Now sport is going to be a little more stiff whenever you're driving. So um, whenever you're driving, the steering wheel is not gonna move as much. It's gonna be a little more um, it's going to feel a little more responsive, if you will, whereas comfort is going to be a little looser. Um, creep, roll, and hold. Now, this is whenever you let go of the gas, um, to, to my knowledge. Now, I may be paraphrasing exactly how Tesla puts this, but the stopping mode, um, it has the regenerative braking. And what that means is the Tesla will brake for you whenever you let go of the gas. There's one pedal driving. You still need your brake pedal in a lot of circumstances, but because Tesla has regenerative braking, you can either stop sooner or roll or really roll whenever you let go of that gas. So really that's what that is. So this helps you if you're stuck in the snow or if you're stuck anywhere, it's just a slip start. Uh, to open your glove box, it's this button right here, pretty nifty. There you go. There is no button to close the glove box. So you have to do that manually. 
but let's get out of driving for now and let's go ahead and let's just start from the top because I just wanted to jump down to driving. Uh, that's the really fun part is the acceleration performance, but your lights, you want to keep it on auto for most of these, um, except for maybe your dome lights. Um, now, obviously you can turn that on here and you can see your dome lights um, illuminate up there, but it's pretty self-explanatory. I'm not gonna spend too much time on this. Um, auto high beam, when you're in autopilot, that'll automatically be engaged. You must have auto high beams on uh, when you're in autopilot. And then there's some preferences here, headlights after exit, steering wheel lights. And what those are, are these little arrows, uh, excuse the camera work here, but these little arrows do illuminate. So you can choose to have that on or off. Moving on, let's go to locks. Now, again, you can choose how you want your car to lock itself. You can um, provide a, a phone. Obviously, you're gonna have a phone while using the car. And when you walk away from the car, it's gonna automatically lock. You can program two different um, keys to the car. Uh, and the keys will look like basically a credit card. Um, I'll pull mine out here in a little bit and show you. Window lock, child lock, pretty self-explanatory. Um, and then walk away door lock. That's what I was talking about a little earlier. Um, when you walk away from your car, it will automatically lock. So these ones are pretty cool for security. Car left open notification. Do you want the Tesla to let you know if you let your doors or doors and windows open prior to closing the vehicle? So if you have something open, it's a security risk. The Tesla will let you know on your phone that you did um, leave that open. A few different buttons here, um, lock confirmation sound. Um, it's basically that short beep whenever you click the lock button and you're walking away and then close windows on lock. So that's another safety feature. If you automatically left it open accidentally, it'll close it for you. So I just wanna pause right now before we get to the rest of this, we are going to go into the battery life a little bit. Now this is huge. Now when you're thinking about a Tesla, there's so many different options here. You can set your limit, you can do supercharging right here. You can even schedule time to charge. It's really, it's a lot. Um, if you're first getting your Tesla. So stick with me. We're gonna do that probably in the middle of the video, but let's go on to the display now and go over that. So a few different display modes from day, night, and auto. Now, obviously auto, this is the day mode with a white background and night mode gives you a black background. Uh, excuse, excuse the fingerprints. To get rid of the fingerprints, you can click screen cleaning mode and use a microfiber cloth to get that off. You wanna click here and hold for three seconds seconds. This is for a safety uh, feature and it'll bring you back here. So let's go back to day mode and you can also see some English language options here. Uh, display as in time, how it shows your battery life from distance and mileage to percentage and miles and kilometers down here if you want to change that. So we went over driving, so let's go into autopilot. So what a Tesla is absolutely known for. So here's what it looks like. So the auto steer, um, the quintessential autopilot feature, auto steer. Now it looks like there is a beta, so uh, probably some calibrations or some, some testing going on there, if you will. Um, I just know that this is the default feature. I haven't changed anything here. Uh, the full self-driving visualization preview. Now I'll try to find some footage of that, but it basically shows you when you're on the road using autopilot where your car is going to go. So set speed limit. So this is kind of cool. Um, you can set the speed. Uh, there's two things that happen when you're in autopilot. There's cruise control and autopilot. So this sets the speed for your cruise control based on the speed limit or your current speed. And I like it at my current speed because um, obviously the Tesla based on the speed limit of the road, it's gonna keep you right at that speed limit or very close to it. So if you wanna go eight miles over, God forbid, <laughs> or, or what have you, you can click the current speed and when you double tap down on the bar over here, if that's how you engage autopilot, you wanna double tap down on that, it'll go off of your current speed. So a few different functions here, um, stay with me. Again, I think we're gonna do the charging right after this, but the speed limit warning, it'll basically give you a red indication um, that I guess you're over the speed limit by quite a lot. Uh, forward collision warning. So this one is, is used often. 
So, and this is pretty sensitive. I have it on medium right now, but I will say that when I'm driving and even if I'm coming up on a car a little bit too quick, um, even on a medium mode, I get a, a, a beep function. It's a warning, it's a beeping, it's very loud. And that is because I have it on medium. Now I could do late and that gives me more time to get close to the car in front of me prior to Tesla warning me that, hey, perhaps you're about to get into a collision. That's what this does. Uh, I'm gonna keep it on medium um, and you have to just experience that for yourself. Lane departure, um, pretty common in cars nowadays. Emergency lane, blind spot, emergency braking and obstacle aware. So big point about these security features. Now Tesla has done research and they have found, I believe there's one accident in 4 million miles. Now I'll check myself on that, but that's when you have all these security features on. So you want to make sure to keep these on. It is much, much safer and proven to be safer than a traditional ICE vehicle. So that's all for autopilot. Let's go into navigation, some sound settings for the commands in navigations automatic navigation automatically navigate to your homework or your next calendar event when you're when you enter your car that'll automatically pull up the gps for you trip planner you want to keep this on if you're taking road trips it'll tell you the closest supercharger along your trip and it'll plan that for you online routing so a lot of people have said well i really wish tesla integrated ways because it takes a look at the live traffic well the tesla does as well at least what we see here generates optimal route and takes real-time traffic conditions into account now who knows really what that means does it use google maps or does it use a ways type of data points i'll have to look more into that but it will change your route if it saves you uh, about 10 minutes and some self-explanatory items here if you want to avoid these things. Allow mobile access. So to my knowledge, this means that if you have the app open on your phone, your car will automatically, excuse me, turn on and you can drive the car. If you don't have, I believe, this mobile access selected, um, then you have to use your card and place it right by the armrest right here in the middle for the car to turn on. So if you want to turn the car off, completely off, then you click this button. It'll say, do you really want to turn uh, the power off? Uh, place brake pedal on the brake. And then, uh, so I'm doing that. You can see this lit up, parking brake is applied. And then you click this and now the car is off. So a few different items here, speed limit mode. So you can limit the car to whatever speed that you want. It will not go uh, in autopilot above 85 miles an hour. Uh, sentry mode, and this is whenever you leave the car. Do you want it to automatically turn on? Just keep in mind, if you have this on, it's going to take some battery. Now I believe it's very little, maybe one mile per hour. Uh, but I want to make sure that you're aware when you have sentry mode on, if something comes within um, probably like a foot of your car, uh, maybe a little more roundabout, it's going to flash the lights. And I actually had this on in front of my home and every single car that drove past my Tesla, the lights would flash. And at night, it was really distracting, kind of disappointing. I don't know how to turn off the headlight function of sentry mode. I don't think you can but that headlight function is just essentially a warning to whoever is around the car. Hey, you know, it's sentry mode is on, you might be being recorded, so things like that. Um, dash cam, um, now this, this turns on if you uh, honk, you're in an accident and you slam on the horn, it's gonna automatically record and a few items here. I'll just keep this brief, but there's a pin um, needed to drive, a pin needed for the glove box, security alarm, parking assist, and Joe mode, which is enable Joe mode to reduce the volume of your car's chimes. The quieter the chime uh, continues to alert the driver effectively while minimizing disruption to passengers in the rear seat, i.e. Joe's kids. So if you want the notifications within your car to be quiet, maybe have uh, sleeping kids in the back, turn on Joe mode. So service, we're not going to go too much into this, but there's certain um, areas here, um, car wash mode, which folds in and rolls up the windows, folds in your side mirrors. You can obviously adjust your headlights. Towing uh, basically puts your car in neutral. You want to use a flatbed truck if you're towing, not one that drags the, the back wheels on the ground. That's per Tesla. Uh, you can adjust your wheel. There's certain notification settings, factory reset, uh, windshield wiper mode, which lets you take off and service the windshield wipers. But uh, your software settings, let's go to that next. 
So I'm just gonna put my finger over the screen because that is my VIN number. Um, but anyway, there's 5,000 miles on my Model 3 right now. And let's go to the bottom here where you will see the current software updates. So essentially you'll see all the software updates here. Here is my latest software update, uh, software updates uh, advanced. You can play around with that. But your car software is up to date as of October 3rd. Just had a really cool update that affected my sound system. It's now a more intuitive sound system. Absolutely amazing that Tesla can push out these updates. So here we go, here's the music setting. Now I don't use a lot of this music setting, but if you have music playing on your phone and you will connect it with Bluetooth, most likely it'll show the song and the artist here. Um, here's some recent artist here that you can just go to that. Um, I don't have the premium connectivity because I never stream music on this, but if you want to, if you want to use Spotify, um, karaoke, which is fun, it'll you know play songs, you can sing along to it. You can do that. Uh, let's go to the camera again. You can play around some of the sound settings. By the way, I've had questions in the comments about the car's speakers. So here's my current setup, if you will. I uh, jumped up the bass a little bit. I turned up the mid and the treble. Uh, extremely clear, extremely good quality bass treble. Very clear, very full sound uh, and loud. So if you're looking for, um, and by the way, this immersive sound, when I spoke about my software update, that's what they gave me. So I'm not really sure what that is, um, but I have it on standard. So I'll let you know what I think about that. But you can play around with the setting. The sound system is phenomenal. Your cameras. Let's go ahead and go to your cameras. Absolutely the clearest camera I have seen on a car. Um, and that is my rear view camera here. And you, again, you can click on this to see the left and the right side camera absolutely amazing to use when you're driving if somebody is merging and they're on your left or right you can see that if somebody is tailing you a little bit excuse me about that if they're tailing you a little bit you can kind of look at what's going on back there um, you can maybe move over what have you but so this is really cool just for a lot of those features um, just for safety reasons alone so let's go to the windshield wipers now. You click this button, this third button, and it's real simple. You just click that. You have a few different settings and you can choose the speed of your windshield. Uh, so let's just go to four, just so you can see the speed here. So obviously that's gonna do the trick um, whenever you're out in the road and it's really, really rainy. Um, now to turn it off, you just click that main button again. So again, that's on and then that's off. All right, so your controls right here, this little arrow brings up so, so much in your Tesla. So what we're gonna do, then we're gonna go ahead and click that and you have all these options. So your calendar, you can make a call. Uh, that's pretty self-explanatory. Your camera, we just went on. Um, now let's go ahead and look at your energy button here. So you can kind of get lost in all this stuff. It basically tells you your projected mileage, um, how often you've, um, you know, your projected range based on the battery life of your car over the past 30 miles. You can have a lot of fun with that if you want. Um, I don't really look at it too much. So here's the charging. Now, I told you we're gonna go over charging, so let's go over charging. So you can open the charge port this way. So you just click that and my charge port is now open in my vehicle. And obviously you can close it right there. So what we're gonna do, let me just get back into there. So what we're gonna do is you can schedule the charge. So if you want to wait until optimal time to charge based on what your electricity company charges you, you can do that. You can throttle the ampage. So I'm not an expert on this, but I know that for safety reasons, um, if your outlet can't um, handle the charge per se, you can actually turn that down if you want. And you can see the max, the max is 32. That gets me 35 miles an hour with my NEMA charger. I have a NEMA 1450 charger. Check out my charging video if you haven't done so already. We go over costs, we go over expectations, but this is what you wanna do. You can set your limit, actually, and there we go, to your daily or your trip charge. So I'm pretty sure you can see that, but there is daily and trip. So daily is the, um, excuse me, set any level for your daily driving needs. And trip charge, useful for road trips. Charging to this level will take longer. So Tesla recommends charging to 90%, which is right about there. Uh, and then your full trip charge is all the way up. Now, to what I remember, my full trip charge, I've had this car for about two months, is 245 miles. So out of the box, my Model 3 Standard Range Plus came to 
262 miles. That's out of the box. So now my full charge is 245. So it's common that you're gonna lose some mileage. So keep that in mind whenever you're specking your car. But it goes, um, it does show you the percentage and, and things like that. Now, if you're charging a supercharger, it'll show you that here. Now, thankfully, uh, because of a lot of you, um, I have plenty of free supercharging miles. Um, I will say that supercharging isn't very expensive. Um, if I'm going from, let's say, 20% all the way up to 90% charge, um, it really doesn't cost me that much money. Um, I think maybe $7. So just keep that in mind whenever you go into supercharging. So this is your seat heater. Obviously there's three settings. That's high, uh, medium, and low. So that's pretty self-explanatory. Now these you use on a daily basis. So this is how you control your air. Now let's just turn it up a little bit right here. That's how you control the speed of your air. Here's your AC, it's on or off. And do I wanna circulate the air within the cabin on or off? So a few different cool things here. Dog mode will automatically keep it at a certain temperature um, while you leave the car. It'll actually show you um, on the screen, uh, the car is in dog mode. The temperature is set at, I believe, 75 degrees. Uh, my dog is safe and I will be back soon. So that's pretty self-explanatory. Uh, let's go ahead and turn that off. And here's how you angle the air. So, um, or I should say direct the air. Let's turn this down for the sound. So um, you can have it push up um, above the dash um, of your car, right up there, right over the uh, dash, if you will. You can have it um, you know, blowing right on your face or at your feet. And yes, that's it. So if you want air in the back, uh, you wanna hit this button back here because there's the driver and there's the passenger. You wanna click that in the back to get your um, rear seat passengers air. And a pretty cool thing of Tesla is you can actually split the air like that. So. You can direct the airflow like this. You can see the air flowing around with my finger. Really, really awesome, completely unique. And again, you can split the air, you can move it up and down. You can see uh, you know, my finger directing the air. Really, really cool. And obviously you can do that on the driver's side as well. How cool is that? Temperature controls, here we go. Obviously it goes up to high. Um, the the maximum measured temperature looks to be 81 and then it's high and then low is obviously there we go low so you can control this with your um scroll wheels here so let's go ahead and do that temperature 65 and then you see there it changed the temperature to 65 you can also um, and this is the right scroll wheel by the way the right scroll wheel you can also control the fan Fan speed 10. You can also control the fan speed by the speaker as well. So let's go ahead and click this and it is the right, uh, right scroll wheel. So I wanna click this. Fan speed two five. And then the fan speed is set to five. Now I could do that manually when I'm driving, but um, a lot of drivers have said this button is really tiny. Um, and to click that uh, 10 different times to get it all the way up to 10, when I could just hit this button, it's really, really convenient. So that is how you control the air in your Tesla. All right, so you have the same exact thing on the passenger side. You can adjust the sound settings over here easily. Uh, your front and rear defrosters, that's very, very simple. Let's go ahead and turn those off. But here it is, your brand new Tesla. Obviously, you have an amazing intuitive touchscreen. Look how simple and responsive this is. It's truly, truly amazing. It does show you the superchargers. Um, now my supercharger is right in the city right here. So there's my supercharger in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, where I am at. Absolutely, absolutely phenomenal. I really appreciate you sticking with me to the end of the video. Um, and if you have any questions at all, put them in the comment section below. There are so many more things in this car from the games on the entertainment here, all kinds of games, all kinds of things you can do to have fun in this car. Um, so make sure to stick around for our future videos. We're gonna go over huge deep dives of the screen, of the performance of the vehicle, of charging, accessories. By the way, please check out the links in the description for the best accessories that you wanna get before you take delivery. But I really appreciate you watching.